Thank you very much. So, uh, I, I want to offer some thoughts, really, uh, uh, to think what uh, the idea of dialogue of civilization could actually mean in terms of a paradigm, a new paradigm for international relations. Um, okay, let me start by saying that there is no blueprint for the construction of a multicultural and peaceful world order in contemporary international relations. It is my contention, however, that for such a global structure to emerge, we need a theory inspired by the idea of dialogue of civilization. What I want to do here is to offer some thoughts on how the link between the growing multipolar configuration of the international system and regionalism as a political process could represent a critical uh, step in constructing the future of global peace. Now, my aim here is not to oppose a, a Huntington thesis of the clash of civilizations. This, uh, this has been done, many things can be said, but actually I want to engage with the Huntingtonian construction of a multi-civilizational and multipolar system, which is the solution that Huntington proposed to what he sees as the danger of the clash of civilization. This is often forgotten because it's in the second part of his book, but he has a solution, a prescription to what he sees as the danger of the clash of civilization. Now, my concern is that a multi-civilizational multi and multipolar world order that is the unproblematic emphasis or even enthusiasm for multipolarity that we hear many times, even in the context of the forum, this idea, I will finally entering a good multipolar world, that's not an ingredient for peace. On the contrary, that's a danger in the logic of multipolarity. There is a dangerous risk of antagonism. So my argument was something else, which is my idea, uh, 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 which I take from the idea of civilizational dialogue, which is in particular uh, a multicultural constituted idea of regional integration, and second, a, a comprehensive idea of peace. Now, I'll try to uh, explain this uh, uh, as, as quickly as I can, and I will draw a few examples from a very unpopular uh, case nowadays, which is the European integration process, a project, which I'm afraid our political leaders nowadays have forgotten that probably is the greatest achievement of European 20th century history, because it has delivered peace to what had been the most devastated a region of the world in, ter in terms of war. The idea of dialogue of civilization in international relations emerged as a radical critique of the political and ideological dominance of a US-centered Western and liberal world. At the core of this idea, one finds a clear normative resistance against the idea of a unipolar world, often together with a persuasion that we are gradually moving towards a multipolar world. The question then arises of whether the idea of dialogue of civilization should endorse the notion of a multipolar world order. This is a relevant question because, as I said, the idea of polarity is clearly associated with an approach to international politics which see the international system as a system of forces to be brought into an equilibrium, the stability of the system, by the well-known mechanism of the balance of power. Therefore, the emphasis of this notion of multipolarity is very much on material sources, great power status. The rest, the normative dimension, which is at the art of the vision of dialogue, is fundamentally irrelevant. What I want to argue here is that in the increasing consensus on the empirical trend towards multipolarity, and I don't have much time to show that, may well be more conducive to the emergence of a more pluralistic, just, and peaceful world. But some conditions need to be met. This is also why some critical scholars, uh, like 
on this uh, very conference, Chandra, Richard Falk, Noam Chomsky, but also I will that Chantal Mouffe, Danilo Zolo, they, they are focusing nowadays, nowadays on the idea of a balance of regional spaces. And they've argued that the multipolar world order uh, is a positive development in the context of their critique of the American unipolar project. However, as I said, there is a risk that without a process of civilizational dialogue at different levels, uh, as an overarching framework of reference, this multi-civilizational and multipolar world order will look very much like what Huntington presented as the solution to the clash of civilization. And therefore, I would argue, it's very likely to uh, determine this self-fulfilling prophecy of the clash of civilization. I don't have time here in the paper, I have a part in which I discuss why multipolarity is indeed becoming empirically uh, more uh, 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 a matter of consensus. And here, the only point I want to make is that the current financial crisis for the first time made it clear that the way out from the financial crisis is coming from the East. The return to global growth is coming from the East. And that is something radically new in the 20th century. Anyway, let me move uh, uh, again to the Huntingtonian uh, argument of the model that he proposed. In his book, uh, Huntington argues that the only way to avoid the clash of civilization is to envisage this multipolar and multi-civilizational order. What is this? He says very clearly, this is an order uh, of what he calls the core states of civilizations as a sources of order within civilizations and through negotiation with other core states between civilizations. So it's a kind of sphere of influence system in which there are core states, Russia, the United States, China, which represent uh, the, the source of order within their uh, civilizations. And also, he says very clearly, this is a world in which core states play a leading and dominating role, is a sphere of influence world, and a core state can perform its ordering function because member states perceive it as cultural kin. Now, uh, this is not the only thing that uh, Huntington says. He says that uh, in order to have uh, this model, the construction of a new world order, we need also three uh, uh, rules for a different normative structure. He says we need the, the abstention rule, which is core states should abstain from intervention in conflicts in other civilizations. That's why Huntington was very much against the war in Iraq and any American intervention outside the Western Hemisphere. And then he said, you need the joint mediation rule. Core states should negotiate to contain or halt fault line wars among states or groups from their civilization. And finally, he even said that you need a commonalities rule, which is peoples in all civilizations should search for an attempt to expand values and institution and practice that they have in common. At the end, these rules were sketched in the last pages, really, of a 300 pages book. And that really explained why the book was very rightly perceived as, books, as the book about the clash of civilization, rather how to avoid the clash of civilization. Uh, but this normative rule uh, uh, were mostly about uh, an ethics of non-interference. That was, according to Anton, the key to avoid the clash of civilization. Um, now, I think here there is a warning uh, in this analysis of Huntington for all the enthusiasts of this idea of multipolarity. Um, in fact, uh, as rightly here, I discussed the work of Chantal Mouffe and Danilo Zolo, and I think they are right in pointing to some of the positive aspects of multipolarity. For example, Chantal Mouffe has argued that the central problem that the current unipolar world under the unchallenged hegemony of the United States is facing is the impossibility for antagonism to find legitimate forms of expression. Under such conditions, antagonisms, when they do emerge, tend to take extreme forms. And so she argued in order to create the channels for legitimate expression of dissent, we need to envisage a pluralistic multipolar world order constructed around a certain number of greater spaces. 
Zolo argues, Danilo Zolo argues similarly, but then he adds that uh, uh, he puts a degrees of caution that for this multipolar, multi-civilization order of great space to work, he argues, uh, to work, a number of complex economic, technological, cultural, and religious conditions must be met that make a dialogue between the world's major civilization possible. And I think he's right. In fact, this is even more necessary, I want to argue, in the present international situations. Because we cannot ignore that since 9-11, uh, the possibility of uh, a coming clash of civilization, different forms, is hammering down on the world. And very worryingly, is entering the collective psychologies of its peoples. So I take the, the, uh, the, the antidote argument as a possibility very seriously. If we don't do it, I think we make a mistake. Now, because of this overall political context of growing cultural misunderstanding and mistrust, which prompted Edward Said to speak of a real danger of clash of ignorance, uh, we should have uh, a politics of widespread processes of intercivilizational mutual understanding at multiple levels. Uh, it's very important for me that we have uh, this ideal of building bridges on mutual understanding, or to use the word of Andrea Riccardi, we need to uh, uh, develop a new art of convivere, of learn and relearn how to live together. And I think this is also very critical for the new order uh, of a, uh, a deconstruction and, uh, of a new uh, peaceful system of international relations. Let me explain briefly why. We need to understand that the popularity of an the Huntingtonian thesis had to do that Huntington for the first was one of the first to frame the post-89 international politics as a multicultural fact. Uh, its proposal of a, multipol a multipolar and multi-civilizational order is indeed an acknowledgement of the centrality of the growing multicultural nature of international society. But, and here lies the problem, it is based on the opposite logic to what I would call the dialogical multiculturalism that we need to strengthen. In Antiton views, the multicultural nature of the world has, on the one hand, internationally to be almost confined within a civilizational cage, following the good fences make good neighbors principle, and on the other, has domestically to be contrasted through strict immigration policy and a new integrationist approach. This is, was very clearly in the other book by Huntington, in which he criticized the growing presence of Latinos in the United States as a way of weakening uh, the American national identity. In sum, Antiton's argument is not about building bridges of mutual understanding, but rather walls of containment and separation. The idea of dialogue of civilization envisages bridges, not walls. In particular, for me, the emphasis should be much more not on the geographical territory dimension of civilization, Civilization, but rather on the normative dimension, that is on civilization as the great cultural and religious social tradition of the world. This implies, for example, that in my view, it's very important that this multipolar sp spatial ordering does not need to take shape along strictly civilizational culturalist line. Rather, it cannot be dismembered from re reinforcing a politics of multiculturalism at home and abroad. To give you an example, I want to take the very hotly topic, at least a couple of few years ago, of the Turkish accession to the European Union, uh, which after we will go over this Euro crisis, that we will get over, will become again a very relevant topic. In my view, from such a perspective, the framing of the Turkish accession to EU as a bridge between Asia and Europe or as a new alliance of civilization, is a very welcome uh, um, development. My argument is that we multiculturally constituted processes of regional integration are more conducive to a peaceful global order as they act as a preventive antidote to the possible negative politicization of cultural differences on a global scale. A similar case can be made with reference to Mediterranean regional integration process, 
which could work by bringing together European and Arab countries, could women work as a laboratory of intercultural uh, dialogue. Could and you finally, please come to the conclusion? Yeah, I'll come to the conclusion. That's uh, uh, what you need to never write a proper speech in such a conference. Uh, it's better to improvise, otherwise you'll find yourself in big troubles. So uh, uh, in two minutes, I'll go to the conclusions. Uh, um, I think this is also important because multiculturalism abroad uh, facilitates multiculturalism at home if you think of the growing presence of the Muslim community in Europe and the effort of global communication on the relationship. Now, uh, I want just to say a few more words of uh, a different idea of peace that Fred mentioned at the beginning also that we should have. I think one of the major problems that we had uh, in contemporary international relations is that we had been reproducing this idea of peace as a kind of result of liberal ways of governance, of liberal democratic uh, uh, or cosmopolitan way of understanding. Uh, I think this is uh, very wrong. I think we need to come back to a different understanding of peace, peace linked to the idea of justice, but also justice and peace linked to the idea of reconciliation. Because here I want to elaborate, I don't have time, on the visionary words of John Paul II, who said, there is no peace without justice, and there is no justice without reconciliation. As also has been remarkably approved by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in South Africa. I think this is a much more concrete way of starting. And finally, I want to here remind you, wasn't this sort of realistic peace the very aspiration which drove Robert Schuman uh, uh, in, a, in his famous uh, speech on the European integration process? I just want to uh, uh, quote one sentence of his famous speech in which he said, world peace cannot be safeguarded without the making of creative efforts proportionate to the dangers which threaten it, threaten it, threatens it. And he goes on on the need of Franco-German concrete collaboration. In my view, the, the idea of dialogue of civilization is this need, contemporary creative effort that we need to do to secure the future of world peace. Multipolarity can be the geopolitical orientation for this future uh, order, but under condition, uh, but we need to put together also a global politics of dialogue of civilization if we want to prevent the dangers or what I see the dangers of the Antintonian uh, model. Uh, sorry, the time is yes. More Let than me say over. just the final sentence. Much perhaps. more than originally yes. announced. And, uh, and I think that uh, um, uh, I can conclude here. Thank you very much. I, th I thank for Professor Petito also for having uh, explained to us how important it is to be consistent in terms of uh, propagating multiculturalism globally. Exactly.